Today we held our third summit on the healthcare benchmark where we focused on the legal and regulatory issues. It was hosted by Senator Brian Townsend and we had two wonderful speakers come down from Massachusetts, the economist Dr. Stuart Altman and Senator Richard Moore who both gave their perspectives about the path that Massachusetts had in front of it to get to a healthcare benchmark and to an open process where they could talk about total cost of care and quality of care and the patient experience. I think it was really important to hear that they had patients and consumers at the table, they had employers coming together to talk about how to create a collective benchmark. They also talked about Delaware and where we are in relation to Massachusetts and how we could collectively use this momentum to move forward. And they thought, you know, from the conversation, we were on the right track and needed to keep going. I think that there, there are a lot of important topics in Delaware tackle into 2018 and beyond. And one of the most important is, is this very issue, not only because of the the importance of health and wellness, obviously, and the importance of doing so efficiently, but also the inequities in our healthcare system and uh, the weight that it ends up being around our ankles as we want to tackle many, many other issues. Just the fiscal implications alone of this issue really hold back so much other progress in Delaware, and so it really is an important topic to tackle. Um, so I've, I've reiterated this because I think it is really important to remember why we're talking about this right now. And when you're really at a place where uh, our per capita healthcare costs are more than 25% above the US average, it's, it's time to just take a look, take a deep dive into why we're going in that direction. And many of you have seen this cost curve escalate that we expect spending to uh, double by 2025. If we don't start to change that, we really are going to be in a situation where we're back at it again every year, trying to figure out the budget, right? Trying to figure out the state's budget, trying to figure out where to make cuts. And some of those cuts are really hard. You start to think about the choices that we're making uh, year over year, and when it's a lot of it is just how we're paying for healthcare. When Delaware healthcare costs consume at least 30% of the, the state budget, we really do need to think about things in a different way. And so this is why the benchmark is important. It's a convening principle, and there are many elements that will have to be embedded in that plan, but we'll get there together. This so I don't how it happened. I won't go into, but the governor and the legislature asked me to chair a task force to look at Massachusetts. And that's when I found that, you know what? States matter. They really do. And now, here we are today, where when I go to Washington, um, I say, you know what? With all due respect, if things are really going to get done, they're going to have to get done at the state level. I've completely changed to believe that on a whole variety of activities, states are where it's going to happen in important ways. Uh, we think we're making progress on the cost containment issue. We have not solved the problem. It's not the holy grail. And so as you deal with this, you'll have variations either because of politics or because Delaware is different. New York, about a million population. We're now at 6.8 million. So those differences, I would still not New York or some of the bigger states. But so the variation size, the demographics make a difference. How many elderly, uh, low income, uh, in the racial and ethnic disparities, all of those things have impacts on the health system. But we, we think we're bending the curve uh, in the cost growth cycle. Second, as Senator Moore pointed out, we, have, we review all uh, increases that exceed the benchmark to find out why. Why do you need to spend more? We were already giving you growth rates of 3.6. And if you're up to five, six, seven, eight percent, what is the reason? And more importantly, can you develop a plan to get down to the benchmark? And if there is goodwill, and there has been goodwill to try to do that, that's fine. But if you run into a provider or a payer that really said, you know, ah, you know, I'm just going to do what I'm doing, we have the ability to find them. Uh, and most importantly, we have the ability to point our finger at them, and our newspapers in town, particularly the Boston Globe, is very anxious to put on the front page of the newspaper what will happen. So, as was pointed out, we are uh, we have 11 commissioners appointed by the governor and the attorney general and uh, the auditor and the governor, uh, first the Democratic governor, now a Republican governor, asked me to chair it. Now, 
So, as I pointed out, we can penalize if groups exceed the benchmark. So let's just go into what's happening, just so you get a flavor for what's going on. So we started back in 2012-13, and we, so first of all, based on results from CHEER, our sister organization, um, you notice that now, important to understand, this is per capita growth, and it's total, very important. This is all spending, including out-of-pocket, with insurance companies, with the federal government, with the state government. Our per capita growth was initially 2.3, and after adjustment, 2.4, significantly under the 3.6. Then we popped up in 2013-14 um, to exceed the benchmark, but there were some very good reasons for it. This was the era when the federal government legislation was coming online, and particularly our Medicaid program, Mass Health as it's called, brought in a lot of new people, and as Senator Moore pointed out, uh, many of these people were sick and really needed extensive care. So the initial estimates were 4.8, the final was 4.2, slightly over 36. We also exceeded the benchmark in 2014-15, and I'm happy to report we just got our report for 2015-16, and again, we're under the benchmark. And if you add up all four years, we are at 3.5555. We are under the benchmark. At which point I'm resigning because I don't want to go before. And, uh, but also understand that the, the benchmark is only, only possible or achieving the benchmark if you do some other things in the healthcare system. Uh, you know, dealing with the, the disparities, for one. Uh, dealing with the scope of practice. I think an important one, it's very difficult. Um, looking at, I, I don't know if you know, it gets in the medical loss ratio, and we look at with the insurers, how much of the money that they take in for premium actually goes to healthcare, and we want them around 90%, so that, so that they can't be spending it on nice buildings and other things that they collect, and they really need to show that they're spending on it. I think looking at you know, the insurance industry is a part of this whole process, and they need to be very much involved in perhaps insurance reform as well. The next summit on the healthcare benchmark will be on October 18th. We'll talk about data analytics and how to calculate costs in a total cost of care model. We look forward to seeing you and hope you can join us then, or maybe on November 2nd, where we'll talk about governance and authority structure. Thanks so much.